Hi, I'm Dr. Lisa Port from the Mount Sinai um, Hospital System, and I'm the director of the Dubin Breast Center, and I'm the author of the New Generation Breast Cancer book. The BRCA genes are genes that all of us have, okay, men and women. The problems arise when there is what's called a mutation or a defect in one of the gene copies. We get one copy, all of us, from both your mother and your father. So you can inherit a mutated or defective gene from either a mother or a father. And when you have a mutated copy of that gene, what that means is that you're at much higher risk of developing breast cancer over your lifetime, as high as 60 or 80%, as well as other cancers caused by the mutation, such as ovarian cancer, pancreatic cancer, prostate cancer in men, or male breast cancer, to name a few. The BRCA gene mutation is definitely more common in one specific ethnic group, which is Jewish people from European background, also called Ashkenazi Jews. In that population, the likelihood of having a mutation is one in 40 or about 2%. In the general population, the gene is not completely absent, but it's much less common. It's about one in 400, okay? So less than 1%. But all ethnic groups can have the gene or a mutated copy of the gene. Hispanic, Icelandic, Scandinavian, and so forth. So we all have to be mindful of the possibility of having this gene as a mutation. So what a lot of people don't understand and a huge misconception is um, there is an understanding that women, young women, can only inherit breast cancer risk from their mother's side of the family. So if your mother or your grandmother had breast cancer, that's important, but you can't inherit breast cancer risk from a father's side, and that's not true. The gene specifically, as well as breast cancer risk outside of the gene, can be passed down through either a mother or a father's side, okay? And if it's a mother passing down the gene, she could pass it down to either a, a daughter or a son. And if there are cancers that are associated with the BRCA for men, like prostate cancer, like pancreatic cancer, which affects men and women equally, they're at risk for that. Um, the same is true for a father who could pass the gene down to a daughter. Um, and the trickier part is that it's harder to detect mutations or be suspicious of mutations in male population because the two most common cancers that the BRCA causes are breast and ovarian. Of course, men can't get ovarian cancer um, they can get male breast cancer, but it's rare. So often the tricky part is being aware of a father's side of the family, even when there may not be a strong family history of cancer. Getting tested for the BRCA mutation in 2023 now, or there are, just so you know, a lot of other genes as well that also are associated with increased risk of breast cancer. So we typically don't test for just BRCA anymore. We test for a whole panel of genes that are associated with cancer predisposition. So they can provide a lot of information, not only about risk for breast cancer, but other cancers as well. Um, the genetic testing process is either a blood test or a saliva test, and that gives one results about this whole kind of a panel of genes. Um, if someone tests positive for one of these genetic mutations, then for sure it's very advantageous to be seen in a specialized center of excellence. Um, we have a program here that we've developed for BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutation carriers, as well as other gene carriers that can really, really develop an individualized program to explain to both women and men what the cancers are that they're at risk for, 
what kind of screening should be done, and really tailor a plan based on a variety of different things, including whether they're BRCA1 positive or BRCA2, they are two different genes, whether they're a male or female, and what age group they fall in. And those are the things that help us really plan a tailored and really personalized plan for the individual. Genetic counseling is actually a really important part of the genetic testing process. Number one, in a perfect ideal situation, getting genetic counseling before testing can explain to a person what the possible results are. And then of course, if one tests negative versus positive, there can be a huge amount of information one needs to guide them through what those findings mean. For example, if my mother had breast cancer and my grandmother had breast cancer and they tested gene negative and I test gene negative, that doesn't mean I'm not still at risk for breast cancer because my mother had it and my grandmother had it. And while it may not be BRCA gene related, it may be another risk factor. Um, and that's important to know that getting tested and finding out that you're negative um, doesn't really, may not really mean as much if your family members are also negative. Conversely, if you test positive, a genetic counselor can be very, very helpful in describing what the cancers are that one might be at risk for and how we would screen for those cancers and what the options are. So there are a lot of new developments in the field of reproduction as it relates to genetic mutations. For example, if someone has the BRCA gene, there is, with each child, there's a 50-50 chance of passing down that mutation to that individual child. There are ways now that through IVF, we can harvest eggs and create embryos with a partner's sperm. And remember, the BRCA gene could be through either the mother's side or the father's side. So a BRCA gene could be passed down through either eggs or sperm. What we can do is create those embryos and then test the embryos for the BRCA gene mutation. And believe it or not, you can ensure that you only implant for full gestation and for full pregnancy genetic free embryos if one chooses to do that. So ironically, BRCA can be ended in one generation if a person chooses to do that. All patients who are getting um, stressful potentially stressful medical information, should seek psychosocial support if they, they feel that they need it. Um, and there are many different avenues for this. Um, we have a full social work program. We have full service psychologists. Um, these learning information about cancer risk can be very stressful. And it can mean different things to different people. And while screening is one option, Preventive surgery is another option, but readiness for that preventive surgery can really vary to ne from never to immediately and anywhere in between. And often people do need psychosocial support to navigate those decisions about continued screening versus being more proactive for prevention and doing more aggressive uh, surgery to, to prevent uh, breast cancer from developing in the first place. So our Mount Sinai's BRCA program, we have um, a website and it has all of the relevant information, contact information, uh, forms to fill out that you can submit um, to get involved or to find out more. Um, you'll have your call returned by a specialist. We'll then find out more about your background and decide if you wanna come in for um, full service consultation.